video, I'm going to take a look at the Leave Insert uh, Matt's higher level paper from 2009. This is paper one. Um, I'm going to do in this video a quick run through of the, of the paper. Uh, I'm going to read through each question and I have the solutions already done out. So you'll see the solutions and I might just talk uh, through each solution. Um, if you want to see the video where I actually go through step by step every solution, uh, there'll be a link to that video. Uh, in the description and in the comments once I have it done. I'll try to have it done in the next couple of weeks. So we'll uh, jump straight in here to question one. And question one says, in the expansion of 2x plus 1 times x squared plus px plus 4, where p is an element of n, the coefficient of x is twice the coefficient of x squared. Find the value of p. So we do the expansion, we multiply out, we get this uh, expression here. We take all the coefficients, all the x squares with their coefficients to one side, all the x's and their coefficients to the other side, take them separate, um, and factorize out. We have 2p plus 1 times x squared and 8 plus p times x. Now we're told that this one is twice this one. So we make our equation of 8 plus p is equal to twice, uh, or 2 times uh, p, 2p plus 1. And we end up getting p equal to 2. Part B, uh, solve the equation. We have uh, three algebraic fractions here. Uh, so when we're dealing with algebraic fractions, what we do is find the common denominator, which is 2x plus 1 times 5 times 3x minus 1. That's just the denominators multiplied by each other. Multiply every term by the common denominator and simplify until you get this quadratic expression here. Factorize, and then we get x equal to minus 3 and x equal to 3 over 4. Question 2, uh, the graph of the function f of x equals 3 to the power of x, where x is an element of r, cuts the y-axis at 0, 1, as shown in the diagram below. Uh, draw the graph of the function g of x is equal to 4x plus 1 in the diagram. All I did was I chose x equal to 0 and x equal to 2, subbed them into the function to get the corresponding y-value, so we get to point 0, 1 and 2, 9, and we draw our straight line. Next part to that is use substitution to verify that the f of x is less than g of x for x equal to 1.9. Sub in a 1.9 into f, sub in 1.9 into g, see if this is less than this, and 3 to the power 1.9 is less than 8.6, which is true. So therefore, uh, the, the expression here is true. Uh, part b then. Uh, prove using induction that the f of n is greater than or equal to the g of n, where n is greater than or equal to 2 and an element of the natural numbers. So your steps for induction are uh, prove true for n equal to 1. Uh, here, our, our n equal to 1 is actually 2 because we're starting at 2. So prove true for n equal to 2, and it's true. Uh, 9 is greater than or equal to 9. Assume true uh, for n equal to k. That you get that expression there and then prove for true for k plus one work through your algebra until you get an expression that is definitely true eight times k is greater than or equal to two well that is definitely true because k is always going to be two or greater so eight times a number that is two or greater is definitely greater than two question three then uh, factorize fully uh, 3xy minus 9x plus 4y minus 12. Well, this is just factorizing by grouping. So take out a common factor with the first two, common factor with the second two, and this is what you get here. Uh, part B then is related to this. So use your answer from part A or otherwise to prove that g of x is equal to zero. Here's g of x. Uh, you notice that this is the same as this, except instead of y, we have log x. So this is the the expression um, this is it factorized now which is the same as up here except for y is now replaced by log x so 3x plus 4 is equal to 0 x is minus 4 over 3 log of x minus 3 is equal to 0 so log x equals 3 x is e to the power of 3 evaluate uh, g dash if e um, so that's the derivative of g 
subbing in e correct to two decimal places so to differentiate uh, g dash if we differentiate 3 log x you get 3x times 1 over x plus 3 log x um, if we differentiate minus 9x you get minus 9 differentiate 4 log x you get 4 times 1 over x differentiate minus 12 you get 0 so that's not there at all so in e instead of x this is what you get here and you can put that straight into the calculator to get uh, g dash of e uh, equal to minus 1.53 Question four, find the integral of four x cubed minus six x plus 10 dx. Just standard integration here. Uh, increase the power by one, divide by the new power. Don't forget your plus c because it is an indefinite integral. Uh, part b then, uh, part of the graph of a cubic function, f of x is shown below. It's not to scale. The graph cuts the x axis at the three points, a, which is two zero, b and c are not given. Given that the f dash of x, so the derivative of f of x, is 6x squared minus 54x plus 109, show that f of x is equal to this here. Well, if this is the derivative, we integrate the derivative to get the function. So integrate this, you get this here. With the plus c, we actually need a minus 126. So how do we get that? We use the point that's given to 0. So if you sub in 2 into the function, it should be equal to 0 sub it in and you get 126 equal plus c equal to zero so that means c is minus 126 which is what it should be there so that gives you the function that they asked for in the first place part two find the coordinates of the point b and the point c well we know that two is a root because we have the coordinate two zero from the graph here so if two is a root that means x minus two is a factor so we can uh, divide x minus 2 into the expression there um, sub it in or divide in and you get your quadratic at the top 2x squared minus 23x plus 63 factorize this to get these values for x which correspond then to the points uh, 4.50 and 7 0 question 5 complex numbers uh, 3 plus 2i is a root of z squared plus pz plus q equal to 0, where p and q are elements of or, and i squared is equal to minus 1. Find the value of p and the value of q. Well, if 3 plus 2i is a root, that means by the conjugate root theorem, 3 minus 2i is the other root. For a quadratic equation, we have uh, minus p is the minus the sum of the roots is minus p, and the product of the roots is q. Uh, in here so minus p and q so some of the roots we have them there add them together you get six so minus p is six so p is minus six product of the roots multiply them you get 13 so q is 13 uh, b part one so v is equal to two minus two root three i write v in the form of or cos theta plus i sine theta so this is polar form you need the modulus of v square root of 4 plus 12 is equal to 4 you need the argument of v is 300 um, have a look at the, the longer video if, you, if you're unsure about how to actually do that so subbing in 4 and 300 you get this here I would think that you need to do it in um, radians so 300 degrees in radians is 5 pi over 3 so you actually get this but they were actually accepting both answers in the exam uh, this year uh, use your answer to b part one to find the two possible values of omega where omega squared is equal to b and give your answers in the form of a plus i b um, so omega is equal to plus or minus v to the power of a half so taking the square root of both sides so omega is uh, plus or minus two times cos five pi over six plus i sine 5 pi over 6. So that's uh, 2 times, just put this into your calculator, and put this into your calculator, you get minus root 3 over 2, and you get a half. Multiply out uh, 2 by the brackets to get this one, and minus 2 by what's in the brackets to get this one. Any questions about this, just ask them in the comments there below. 
question six. Uh, so given that x minus the square root of 32 is equal to the square root of 128 minus 5x, find the value of x. Give your answer in the form of a root 2. So we have x plus 5, x is equal to square root of 128 plus root, uh, root 32. So just taking x's to one side, numbers to the other. So 6x, add these together. You can use your calculator if you want. It's 12 root 2. Divide then by the 6 to get x is equal to 2 root 2. Part 2, <clears throat> a is the square root of 32k squared, uh, the square root of 50k squared, the square root of 128k squared, and the square root of 98k squared. Show that the mean of set a is equal to the median of set a. Well, the mean is all of them uh, added together and then divided by 4. This is... Um, each one written down in its uh, simpler form. So taking the square root, so root uh, 32, for example, is uh, 4 root 2, and then root k squared is k. So put them all in um, the form. Your, your calculator will give you them. And then find the mean is 6 root 2k. The median, then, you need to put them in uh, numerical order, then get the middle two, add them together, divide by 2, and you get 6 root 2k. Part B, prove using contradiction that the square root 2 is not a rational number. So this is a proof that you need to learn on the course. Here is uh, that proof if you have never seen it before. Assume root 2 is rational. Uh, if it is rational, that means root 2 can be written as p over q, where p and q have no common factors. Uh, that means that 2 is equal to p squared over q squared, square on both sides. Uh, working through the algebra, you get 2q squared is equal to p squared. That means p squared is even because it can be written as a number times 2. That means p is even because if the square root, if, if a number squared is even, then its square root is also even. That means p can be written as 2 times k. We can do the same thing for q and write it as q equals 2 times m. That means, if we go back to your original expression, root 2 is equal to p over q, replacing p and q with 2k and 2m, they have a common factor, and that is a contradiction. So this is the proof of uh, root 2 not being a rational number. Section B, uh, question 7. The closed line segment 0, 1 is shown below. First three steps in the construction of the Cantor set are also shown. Now, you've probably never heard of the Cantor set before. It doesn't really matter. Um, you, you're given enough information here to do this question. So step one, remove the middle third like this. Then step two, remove the middle third of each remaining line segment. Step three, remove the middle third of each remaining line segment. And you continue on in that fashion. Part A. Complete the table below to show the length of the line segments removed at each step for the first five steps. Well, step one, you remove one third. Step two, you're removing two ninths. A third of a third and a third of a third is two ninths. Uh, step three is four twenty-sevenths. So it's a third of a third of a third and a third of a third of a third, etc. So you can actually see the pattern here, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 3, 9, 27, 81, 2, 4, 3. Part 2, find the total length uh, of all the line segments removed in the initial line segment of length 1 unit after a finite number n of steps in the process. Give your answer in terms of n. <clears throat> so this is the S of n formula. A is 1 third, or is 2 thirds. Fill in A and R, and this is what you get. S of N is equal to 1 minus 2 thirds to the power of N. Find the total length removed from the initial line segment after an infinite number of steps in the process. Well, this is the sum to infinity formula, A over 1 minus R. Summing in, you get 1. So total length, if you keep going forever, you'll eventually remove everything. Uh, part B part 1, complete the table to identify the end points labelled in the diagram. So these are the end points uh, A, B, C, D, E and F. So there they are, 2 thirds, 2 ninths, 7 ninths, 8 ninths, 7 twenty sevenths and 25 twenty sevenths. Uh, part 
to then give a reason why one third minus one ninth plus one over 27 minus one over 81 is a point in the Cantor set. Well, the reason is because it is the end point or the start point of a line segment. The limit of the series, one third minus one ninth plus one twenty seventh, etc., is a cant is a point in the Cantor set. Find this point. It's the sum to infin infinity a over one minus or, where a is a third and or is minus a third. So sub it in and you get one over four. Question eight, the weekly revenue produced by a company manufacturing air conditioning units is seasonal. The revenue in euro can be approximated by the function R of t is 22,500 times the cosine of pi over 26 t plus 37,500, where t is the number of weeks from the beginning of July. Uh, find the approximate revenue produced uh, 20 weeks after the beginning of July. Give your answer to the nearest euro, sub in 20, and you get 20,659. Find the two values uh, of the time t within the first 52 weeks when the revenue is approximately 26,250. So we let the function equal to 26,250 and solve through the equation uh, cos of pi over 26t is minus a half. So um, cos inverse of minus a half is two thirds and uh, 4 pi over 3 or 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3 so that means that pi over 26 t is equal to that and that solve for t 52 over 3 and 104 over 3 are the answers part c find or dash of t the derivative of or t um, equal to uh, 22,500 cos pi over 26 t plus 27 or 37,500. So differentiating that, um, we have a chain rule here. So it'll be 22,500 times uh, cos is minus sine pi over 26 t times the derivative of what's in there, which is pi over 26. The derivative of uh, 37,500 is just zero. Multiply out and you get this here. Use calculus to show that the revenue is increasing 30 weeks after the beginning of July. Well, if we substitute in 30 into the derivative, we get this here, uh, 1263.44, which is greater than zero. And if the first derivative is greater than zero, that means the function is increasing. Part E. Find the value of the time t within the first 52 weeks when the revenue is at a minimum. Use the second derivative to verify your answer. So this is what we have. This is the, the first derivative here. Set it equal to zero. Um, divide across by this sine of pi over 26 t is equal to zero. So t uh, pi over 26 t is equal to zero and pi over 26 t is equal to pi. That means t is equal to zero and t is equal to 26. Take the second derivative, so differentiating this, uh, we get minus uh, 11,250 over 13 pi times a chain rule again for sine becoming cos, write down your bracket, and then der the derivative of what's in the bracket. Sub in zero into the second derivative, uh, your answer is less than zero, so you get a max. Sub in 26 into the second derivative, your answer is greater than zero, so you get a min. So that means at time equal to 26, um, we have the revenue at a minimum. And finally, question nine. So Norman windows consist of a rectangle topped by a semicircle as shown. Rectangle topped by a semicircle. Uh, write P in terms of X, Y, and Pi. So P is the perimeter. So perimeter is twice x, here's x and here's another x, plus twice y, here's one and here's another, plus half of a semi or half of a circle basically, uh, 2 pi or radius being or um, a semicircle obviously giving us half. Multiply it out and that's what you get there. 
Uh, in a particular Norman window, the perimeter P is 12 meters. Show that Y is equal to 12 minus 2 plus pi times X over 2. Uh, so here is the perimeter of a Norman window. Let it equal to 12. Isolate Y on its own and you get it there. 12 minus 2 plus pi X over 2. Complete the table on the right. So when X is 0, what is Y? When X is this, what is Y? So it's just subbing in 0 in here, you get 6. Sub in 12 over 2 plus pi in here, you get 0. Uh, on the diagram below, graph the linear function. Y is equal to 12 minus 2 plus pi X over 2. So we can use these points here that we just got. So 0, 6 is there. And then uh, 12 over 2 plus pi, 0 is here. Find the slope of the graph y, correct to two decimal places, and interpret this slope uh, in the context of the question. So here is our equation, um, y equal to, to this. If we put it into the form of y equal to mx plus c, so here is, uh, well, this is uh, c plus mx. So m is the coefficient of x, which is minus 2 plus pi over 2, which is minus 2.57. The interpretation of that is for each 1 meter rise in the radius of the semicircle, the height of the rectangle falls by approximately 2.57 meters. Part C. Um, the Norman window shown below has a perimeter of 12 meters and y is equal to 12 minus 2 plus pi x over 2. Show that the function a of x equal to 24x minus pi plus 4x squared over 2 represents the area of the window in terms of x and pi. So the area is going to be the area of the rectangle plus the area of the semicircle. So uh, 2 times xy, so this is uh, 2x by y, 2xy, and then pi r squared times a half, so pi r squared over 2 will give us that. And then just uh, add these fractions together and you get the expression that we're looking for. Find uh, a dash of x, so find the derivative of a. Uh, so this is a written in a simpler form, getting rid of the fraction, uh, dividing 2 into this and into this. And then differentiation then is quite easy. So dif differentiate 12 x to get 12, differentiate uh, pi over 4 plus 2 x squared, just multiply down by 2, and that cancels with this 2 here, so pi, f pi plus 4 times x. Find the relationship between x and y when the area of the window in part c is at its maximum. So to find its, uh, its maximum there, um, we take the, or let the derivative equal to 0, so that's 12 minus pi plus 4 x equal to 0. Solve for x, you get 12 over pi plus 4. So y is equal to 12 minus 2 plus pi x over 2, which is equal to 12 minus 2 plus pi times 12, pi o 12 over pi plus 4 over 2. Work through um, this equation here, and you get 12 plus pi over 4. Uh, is equal to the radius. So the area is a maximum when the height equals the radius. And that is the end of paper one. If you have any questions, just ask them in the comments below. If you want to see the more detailed video, then you can check out. I'll have the link, once I have the video made, I'll have the link in the comments and in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.